and hello everyone we have uh, someone here that i have wanted to bring to the channel for a long time uh beck from glitched polygons and we're going to talk about privacy really it's internet privacy and where this is um going the whole uh, thing <laughs> um we'll try to be a little bit careful as well about uh the topics uh you know this being YouTube and all that. But first of all, can you tell us a little bit about what is your field of expertise and uh, why should we care about internet privacy at all? Of course. So um, I would say that, first of all, I, I work as a programmer, so maybe I'm biased in a certain way, but um, I work in the field of originally 3D uh, video game development, but also security and privacy now. Um, I develop apps in the field of security, privacy, and those things, but also video games. Now, um, I, I want to point out, just right now, so that everyone knows, you have made um, the apps that you're talking about here. Uh, I put links in the video description. Uh, and again, you did not ask me to point that out at all, but I just wanted to mention that. So that thanks. Uh, actually, by the way, many solutions. Actually. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about those apps? Sure. So I developed both a symmetric and an asymmetric cryptography uh, interface, and the the technology behind is actually open source, so it can be used for free. Um, but the visual interface is what people pay for if they want a nice uh, designed GUI, which is a graphical user interface. And the idea behind it is that um, I, when especially when the WhatsApp fiasco started earlier this year, I, uh, I decided that as a programmer, isn't there anything that I can do about this in a very bland way, in a way? Um, so I decided to extract the thing that people are missing or maybe mistrusting the companies uh, into a separate app. So when you use the app, you encrypt the data yourself. So if you want uh, ultimate privacy and secrecy online, I thought, why not bring people to take their privacy in their own hands and uh, encrypt it themselves? There is already other ways to do it. I just found them to be not really nicely designed or not that approachable. Um, and so I decided to, to approach it in a different way. There's there, the apps, that I, the ones that I did, those are available for Windows, Linux, Mac, and um, Android devices. Um, but as I said, they're, they're not the only apps. There's many solutions to this problem. I think it's more about people should be starting to be willing to encrypt data themselves mm. and take their privacy seriously. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, um, the reason why I want to do this shout out is that I, I'm i not usually doing shout outs to big companies, but I view you, I see you as a craftsman, like a knife maker. Uh, because you're making this product and it's it is useful and you're not a big company trying to get people's money uh, and all that uh, so yeah I, I I think even though I don't fully understand the whole concept of encrypting and so on and I guess most people think to most people it's a mystery a little bit of a mystery <laughs> but um, um, I had a look and it looks uh, I think it looks nice and and simple simple to use so <laughs> yeah well <laughs> it's a compliment I feel like a craftsman but most people just refer to me as a nerd so <laughs> well it is a craft what you're doing is a craft I would say um, but um, you know most people they just want to uh, have their smartphone here take a photo of something and just click on a symbol and then it's out there and then they get all the likes and comments and all that, that <laughs> and, and that's it you know and i i i have started to worry more and more about the privacy that uh, people are 
giving away, really. Uh, and I always say that Facebook is not a social media platform. It's a data extracting tool for companies. And <laughs> I don't know, but it's what we're going to talk about here is why internet privacy matters, first of all, and how we can secure our privacy in a, in a better way. Uh, so most people will say, I have nothing to hide. So why would I care? You know, we have there's all... a famous quote of Edward Snowden that I'm not going to say right now about that argument. But well, I, think... I, I think you can. I think you can. I actually if don't know to. it off the top of my mind. I would have to Google it because it's oh, kind of a tongue okay. breaker. I, what was it? It was like, uh, it's not that you shouldn't care because you have nothing to hide. It's, it's like, like saying, no, sorry, I don't know. I would have to Google it. It's, uh, it's a very good quote, actually, but there's many. Maybe let's look at it uh, later. But first of all, concerning the other thing is that um, I think people should, first of all, start with awareness. When are they uh, inflicting damage to their own privacy? Because most people just blindly post and give away their data for free to companies that they don't know what they are exactly doing with their data. Mm. Um, I think that is the first thing, first of all, that before you post an image online, that you're aware that it's probably going to stick around on their servers for a very long time and um, that it's basically giving away sensitive information, maybe about your location, your current status in life. Um, most people don't think about that, that when they post a picture of what they're having for dinner or where they are at, they're basically they're basically broadcasting this online for Absol other people uh, to see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and um, I suspect that or i'm quite certain about the, the thing the, the fact that these companies are extracting information so that that can be put into a uh, big computer system <laughs> in lack of better words and it can then be used to manipulate uh everyone every single individual into feeling acting and and thinking in a in a certain way by using social media and i know uh, facebook fakebook have they, they they have made uh they have done research on this by using some of their uh, clients <laughs> people using facebook and they were they wanted to see if they could affect how they were feeling um i don't know the details around that but it's it's it should make people stop and question how they use uh, the internet and social media, yeah. I think. Also, in a way, probably overthink about how they want to shape their interaction with other human beings. If they appreciate people liking what they are having for dinner, why not just go out to dinner with them, uh, especially mm. with the inner circle of family and friends and um, you referred to the companies as a, a data extraction. I, uh, that's what they are, they're data mining companies. Mm -hmm. What they do is that they, they create a profile which is nurtured and, and fed with your data over the time. And the more your profile grows, the more, let's say, leverage they have on you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, is, it, um... is, uh... It is something that we can clearly see when it comes to uh, the topic that we will try not to talk about, but uh, circus, uh, this whole circus um, yeah. run by the clowns for uh, one and a half year or so now. Um, we are constantly bombarded, I would say, with propaganda. Um, and not only that, but... Um, if you think or say something different, the video is taken down, you're banned from face, Facebook and all that. So that should make people think again. Um, and that, that's a very obvious thing, but I think this comes into, it goes into everything on so, in social media now. 
Uh, people are being manipulated uh, as we speak. Um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, but <clears throat> no, sorry, go on. <laughs> I know, I just wanted to say that it's absolutely correct. They're being censored, they're being uh, controlled, profiled, and people are giving away this data for free. They're, they're doing it every day. I see it in the in the tram and the bus as people go scrolling. It's all they do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Scrolling on their Instagram feeds. And uh, yeah. 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 And I think it's too late to um, to have people come off their smartphone addiction, I guess. But yeah. do you have any advice? to how we should use social media uh, and, and, and the internet in general, but specifically social media when it comes yeah. to privacy. Yeah. So when it comes to privacy, I would absolutely not recommend always uh, broadcasting for everyone to see and also to always double check their privacy settings if they use it so that it's not broadcast to everybody only their friends and maybe family and friends of friends that's already starting to get sketchy um and then obviously the way of use now i i can't tell people how they should run their lives mm. but uh, i i can say something about how i used it back when i had it i i don't have face so full disclaimer i don't have any facebook or instagram anymore i have one for the glitched polygons project but i think the last post was something like 2017 when i was doing some 3d modeling but uh, back when i used facebook it was i i was in the army only for a very short period of time and uh, when i was extracted out of the army i wanted to keep in touch with the buddies there because i knew basically nothing close to nothing about them and uh, they only gave me their Facebook accounts. And that was a very positive, I would say the positive side of the social media because I could stay in touch with them and we would actually meet and have uh, beers together. Uh, that's, I think, a positive way uh, to utilize social media. What I would not say is a positive way to utilize it is to, is to give away their data just for free. Yeah, absolutely. And also, the, the, you mentioned the smartphone addiction. That's a huge topic. It's it's mm. it's viewed as normal. I think it's 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 abused into normality, and um, people are making use of their smartphones. And when they're on it, they are on social media. So I think those two things go hand in hand. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I um, I have a theory. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to uh, smartphones, and uh, it's not so much, uh, it's it's more an, an observation. Uh, you know, a few years ago, all the people, meaning people older than me, <laughs> so, some would say I'm old, but older than me, uh, they did not have a smartphone, and they didn't use social media. And I think it was, you had this push towards getting that generation hooked on their on smartphone and social media um now it they are as addicted if not more than young people yep. that's my observation and this must be one of the main reasons why those people that generation who are very obedient when it comes to the government and all of that have just obeyed every rule and regulation during the last few months or yeah many months now so <laughs> getting that generation hooked on the smartphone was like almost genius because now you can just yeah i won't yeah I, i'll stop right there but uh, I'm interested in your opinion on this. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny because my my grandma now has a smartphone too. Uh, she's, um, oh God, I don't know exactly how old she is, but uh, she's a very cool woman. And now she has a smartphone. She has an iPhone six, and um, she she uses it to do video calls with me because she lives elsewhere. 
and she finds it very cool. It took a lot uh, to to convince her in a way, um, but I can't speak for social media usage. She doesn't use it. But you said correctly that it's a very great move to to have them hooked to this platform. Mm -hmm. They're also, now it's it's always bad to say like they and they are, but uh, I feel like that generation identifies with just believing the media, just just Mm -hmm. taking it all in because maybe in, I don't know how it was in the past, but maybe in the past it wasn't that bad, especially uh, considering the mainstream media being a, relatively neutral source of information maybe in the past Um, and that would take some getting used to especially when having a smartphone yeah well i think you're correct there and um it's uh it's 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 a very effective way to reach people um now we're seeing governments and big uh big ph (laughs) The people making the treatments, the mystery juice and all that. That's what I call it. (laughs) Uh, Working together, the governments and those companies and and big media, you know, mainstream media. It's um, it's 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 a collaboration there. It's quite obvious. I mean, I hope everyone must see that it's a collaboration Um, and they are using uh, TV still, but also social media and censored social media, uh, to reach people like they never have been able to do before. So, uh, I, w- I want to say this word, I'm going to say it now. It's brainwashing. That's yeah. what's going on. So, yeah. It's a good word. <laughs> um, do you think that there is a difference now that we're talking about generations difference? when it comes to understanding privacy online, online privacy, internet privacy, is there a difference between generations or not? I feel like there is, and it's a, it's a funny phenomenon because maybe the elder generations would care about privacy, but they don't know enough about how it exactly works and mm-hmm. end up giving their data away with unwillingly, maybe. Um, and, On the other side, there's the newer generations who know exactly what's going on. It's just that they don't care. Yeah, well, I hope they care, but it's just that they don't understand because they're young. Now, there are many young people who are wise and who does understand. Yeah, I think it's also because the consequences are invisible. Nobody ever thinks about what exactly happens with the data after it's broadcast yeah. <clears throat> no but i'll give one example it's it's a very um it's a it's a little bit uh, i don't know stupid but uh, not 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 stupid but um here's one thing uh someone is doing something in uh, on a party at a party or uh posting something in social media that's a little bit edgy maybe um politically socially or in in some way a little bit out there maybe and then everyone forgets about it and then that person might end up in a relationship uh 10 years later and the other person suddenly discovers something an image a photo you know that's material for drama. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and then you have this idea, and I I have worked as a therapist, and I, I know that people are saying, well, you should always forgive, and uh, oh, everyone has a past, and all that. It no, it doesn't work that way. That's that's just a fantasy. Uh, it it doesn't work. That way. Maybe it's, it's, it just sounds good. Yeah, it sounds good, but it's not like that in real life. So uh, then that image is going to haunt that person forever and they break up and you know so (laughs) uh, (laughs) and there are many other examples i guess um and if we yeah we're going to talk about this because what if we start moving towards a more totalitarian state or, or or government which i think we are 
how will social media be used and affect people in 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 such when we move towards a more totalitarian uh, society? I just think that the data that is available on the social media will be used as a measurement for the quality of your service to this totalitarian system um, and it will be used against you if required mm. or for you. They will probably implement something in that direction. Kind of creepy to think about it. Yeah. Of How would that work for you? Or can you just explain that? Hmm. Are we talking China social credit score system? Yeah, I was thinking about that, but mm. I don't know enough information about how exactly it works, so I'm not really allowed to talk about it, but I I can only imagine. Um, what I'm thinking is that maybe at some point if you say something that is not within the schema of what they want in their propaganda and you have enough people following you, if the first step, which is always to have ridiculization, to just laugh it out if that doesn't work they will probably use measurements against you using the data that you provided on there mm. and i could also picture um maybe a future where social media accounts or at least one of them is mandatory for people be that for tracking or for any type of uh, this type of uh, yeah. data mining. Yeah. I, worry i worry a lot about a lot the tracking, about tracking. Yeah. um and some people say I have nothing to hide. I would say I think you do. Me, I have lots of things to hide. Most yeah. of the things I do, I want to hide. Um, <laughs> not because I'm a criminal or anything like that. Of course, but it's, <laughs> it's not. It's all. It's never about that. It's just mm. never about that. Uh, it's about if you keep secrecy about your data, you get to decide with whom you share it. And then it's also more special because then if more people do this, you also feel more honored to have someone share something with you because you know that they're very secret about things. And this this is how I think healthy relationships build. Mm. Because otherwise, you know, it's just there, available, always there. It's nothing new. You, you did something and they already know it. The next time you meet, yeah, I did this and that. And they're like, yeah, I know, I saw it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the tracking? Um, for those of us who do not want to be tracked, what can we do? Um, well, do it? it's yeah. difficult and there's just no real evidence about how we are really tracked. Um, what I just found very funny is that recently I showed uh, to one of my family members their uh, Google Maps history. They had their location history turned on, which I think is on by default, or it asks you. But you know how people go like, okay, 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 tap, 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 and poof, the warnings are gone. And <laughs> there's the full location history of where they went, and they I show them, yeah, you went here, you, you fueled up there, and then you went there, and this and there, and it was like, oh, okay. Uh, we deleted it, but uh, is it really deleted? Nobody knows. Uh, I assume it's not. It's probably logged somewhere, hmm. and I don't know what other things are really being tracked, and I probably don't want to know. So one thing you can do is if it's really about you just wanting to have a walk and having a different spirit when you walk around knowing not to be tracked is to just leave your smartphone at home. Yeah. yeah. And, or, or you can bring a, another spare phone and just disconnect it from the network. If you need something, you might just as well have an emergency call on the spot and turn it on when needed. I had that when I changed the, um, uh, how's it called in English, the, uh, the provider of the services for the, for the phone. Um, and there was a delay in the delivery of my SIM card. So I had around four days I had to wait for my current SIM card. And at first I was like very disappointed uh, about that. But then when I went out in the city the first time without a functioning smartphone, I, I left it at home entirely. I realized nobody knows where i'm at i i could be anywhere hmm. i and that's a different that's a different feeling I, I really recommend people to try that once just just for the kicks and and see how that affects your behavior it's um it's a means of more privacy more yeah you feel more intimate but at the same time almost like a sort of freedom it's like oh i'm free finally i 
it's it's weird to say because it's not like the smartphone is telling you not to do something or something else, but you just don't have the technology with you to track you. Absolutely. I do that often and I don't have a smartphone, so yeah. it's uh, it's very liberating. Uh, yes. it's, it, I do recommend it. Um, <laughs> and, and it's not boring. It's not boring. But um, uh, before we wrap this up, as they say, yeah. Um, yeah. where is this moving? Where are we heading? Um, what would you say? Uh, in 10 years time? How does this look, the whole privacy thing? Yeah. Now, even though it sounds really bad, the whole thing, I, I mean, I'm a really positive person. I don't think it's going uh, to hell anytime soon. Uh, but it might get worse under certain circumstances. Um, there's already things that I noticed happening. For example, I had a, an Oculus Rift VR headset. I, I used it to play Half-Life Alex when it came out. It's a very important uh, game for me. I don't know what any of that means, but that's okay. It's a, it's a video game that I wanted to play very badly that was okay. sadly okay. for VR only. So I I bought one, it was used, and I, I, I put it on and played the game. And after around six or seven months, Facebook, who owns Oculus, decided to implement a new policy that you may only use your device when you have a connected Facebook account. I don't have Facebook. Mm. <laughs> and starting from a certain month, your device would basically be bricked if you didn't have a Facebook account. And then I, one thing brings to the other, I, I get rid of the thing as fast as possible because I think, so yeah, now I create a Facebook account. I get this, I give the finger, they take the hand. And I've, what happens if I, I were to post something very bad? <laughs> so what if I'm not nice with somebody on Facebook or I, I, I don't know? I, I just imagined this scenario. Do they disable my hardware now? That's not something I want. You have a fully functioning 500 francs device uh, bricked by the absence of a software and your profile registered on that software. That's absurd. That's already happening right now. So I can only imagine how it will be in 10 to 15 years, but uh, well, I, I stay positive. They are connecting uh, the electricity in houses to, well, the internet basically, yeah. through smart meters, which I see as a huge, huge problem. Um, but it's like if I mention this to people, they, they just don't care. <laughs> yeah. I think they fully ignore the fact that they could be shut down in a very short time of uh, period of time. Um, I also admit that I'm very dependent on the electricity grid. I mean, I, I work in the field of software development. I need it. I, I mean, I, I have my private server lying here. I have everything depending on the electricity. Um, and also I have a smartphone. I mean, mm the way it is um, maybe we should all start uh, having those bikes where you can uh, <laughs> ride and generate your own electricity <laughs> yeah well i'm i'm getting into the whole off-grid uh, thing now and um it's a process and it's going to be going to it's going to take some time but i think you can only be truly be free when you have become off-grid when it comes to electricity and everything which is not something everyone can do because if you live right in the middle of a city it, it's going to be very difficult or impossible but uh, at least um uh we we are moving towards that now um so self sufficiency is hard it's really hard it takes some hmm. extreme research extreme development and uh being ready for adverse adverse conditions, um, especially concerning consumption. Um, but how is that with going off with? I mean, um, do you think that in a future where things go really bad in a way, 
um, that they will try to keep people in the cities, that they make it really unattractive to go off grid or maybe even illegal to a certain degree. What I think, I, I honestly don't know. Um, I, I think that some people say there, there are these people who have a grand plan for everything. Maybe so, but usually it doesn't play out that way. So I believe maybe we're going into a very chaotic uh, time now, but um, who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Um, let's hope for the best absolutely and prepare for the worst as they say and um, exactly. yeah now um, I want to thank you for your time I'm going to as I said try to keep it short because yeah. the thing is when these uh, videos uh, are more than half an hour long then people <laughs> uh, get scared and they don't want to watch uh, at all so that's that's how it is uh, but uh, thank you for inviting <laughs> me thank, thank you well i want to say that um for those who are still watching and listening please go and check out um, the links in the video description um, thanks Jim. so uh, yeah well thanks very for your simple time. it's very simple you put the message in you put the password in and you encrypt and whoever has the password can decrypt again. It's very simple. Mm. You forget the password, the message is gone. <laughs> simple is good. That, that's what we need, you know. So, um, Thanks. Yeah. Thanks but for okay. having me. Okay. Bye-bye then. Have a nice day. You too. Thank you, Bjorn.